in God is not a stagnant state, it's a journey. As believers, we should grow in our knowledge of God and His Word. Walk with Alan Cutting and many other believers as we walk the believer's journey. Aloha and welcome to the Believer's Journey. I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank you for watching our program, for sharing. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, it helps you get to us quicker. It helps us as well. And I want to thank all of our sponsors, uh, Guerrero CPA, Guerrero Law, Trade Show Displays. I want to thank all of those who help us out in, in every way that you do. Uh, it really is, is precious to us. Um, today, we have, uh, I have special, special guests. They flew all the way out from Moldova to be here. And so um, I want to introduce uh, Radu and Luda Kukosh. Hello. Hello. Good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're going to talk about ministry. Um, so uh, Radu and Luda are missionaries in the Republic of Moldova. And they've been doing it for over 20 years now, right? 24. 24. And um, so they've been at it a long time. And what, what we want to talk today is, is uh, balance in ministry, what they've done, how they've seen things, what they've gone through. Uh, maybe if you are a minister, a missionary, a pastor watching this, that maybe uh, what they do and what their wisdom can share uh, may help you, may help all of us. So anyway, I want to open it up for discussion. And um, I do know that when you guys first got into the ministry, I want, I want to ask you before we get into what you did and, and all the things you went through and how you were starving in the beginning, um, tell us why and how you got into the ministry. Well, uh, when I first believe, believed, so... Um, I was hearing about missionary work, and uh, uh, somehow it stuck in my my heart. And so, after a while, I I just felt that God is calling me uh, to to ministry. Well, I was 16 years old at that time, so had no idea what it means to be a missionary. I even didn't know this word missionary. <laughs> Uh, but later, when I uh, studied at the uh, University in Moldova, so Campus Crusade just started ministry with uh, students, uh, I was involved with, uh, in the ministry. And so I learned that uh, ministry and mission work is to bring gospel to those who don't know Jesus. And so I saw the need in uh, Moldova. Uh, especially among students, because I was involved in the ministry with students. And so for me, when I was the third year at uh, university, it was easy to decide that, yeah, I want to do this for all of my life. And so in 2000, I joined full-time ministry with Campus Crusade. I was alone at that time. Single? Single, yeah. Well, yeah. So I knew Luda, we were friends, uh, but I just didn't know that I want to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so then uh, after a year, uh, we got married and the ministry became kind of different, uh, you know, serving together, not alone. Uh, she may have a different story how she joined Campus Crusade, uh, because we didn't discuss. Uh, we had our two different ways how we joined Campus Crusade. You might tell. Okay. <laughs> In 1995, I was a student first year, and I came to Christ. Uh, and um, during the summer, I got baptism and uh, went back to my dormitory being second year as a student. And being a Christian, I felt so lonely in my dormitory. Uh, I saw that I have different values than my uh, neighbors <laughs> and uh, roommates have. And I am, was trying to share the gospel to them. I didn't know how to do that, uh, but I felt and I saw very big need in Christ uh, to share about Him to students. And I didn't know how to do this. 
and I felt lonely, as I told, and I started to pray for some Christian um, friends to come and to help me to share the gospel and to speak about Jesus and uh, the good news that everybody has to know. Uh, and in this, this way, my prayers were met with prayers of Campus Crusade for Christ and Moldova staff. Uh, they were praying for a student, Christian student, to meet with and to start a student ministry in dormitories. So we met in a wonderful way and uh, they came to my room in the dormitory and started to help me. Actually, they taught me uh, how to share the gospel. They started to do uh, Bible study meetings in my uh, room in the dormitory. And I saw how wonderful it works and people are hungry for Christ. Uh, and during years being a student, uh, God uh, att um, attracted my attention to verses that fields are ready, so pray for the workers. And I felt like I have to be this worker. I prayed for fields because I saw the need, I saw that everybody is ready and is uh, thirsty to listen. And I started to pray for workers and God told me, you should be this worker. And um, receiving the great uh, commandment to go and to teach, to make disciples, I thought this is the wonderful way. How can I spend my life just to have a big impact in the other lives? Speaking about Jesus, teaching from the Bible, telling the truth. This is the best what I can do in my life. And um, when I um, graduated from u uh, university, I understood that he calls me to be a missionary in my country, not in another countries. Um, so I just was obedient to God's calling. Okay, and here you are. You're in. You're in Campus Crusade for Christ. Um, when was it that the two of you met, and how long was it until you actually got married? Well, we met when we were students uh, and became friends, then good friends. Then I thought that she'll be a good wife for me. <laughs> <laughs> so one night I, I, I wasn't prepared for, you know, like making a proposal to start dating uh, and well, we are friends, so like talking together and say, well, you know, I think that you'll be a good wife for me. So she thought that I'm kidding her and said, no, I, I, I cannot make jokes on this. So I'm pre pretty serious. And so she she agreed and we started dating, uh, started dating. And in 10 months we had our wedding. So we are married uh, for 23 years. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, when you were first in Campus Crusade together as a married couple, you were going to the university and the schools to talk to students, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. How did you survive? How did you eat, uh, you know, pay rent? What was it that, how did that happen? Well, you know, we were young. We didn't think much about about uh, how we are going to eat or how we are going to, you know, like having a place to live. Uh, I would say that uh, at that time, like receiving the calling to be missionary, I said yes, and I, I, I was ready to follow whatever God will bring in, in my life. So uh, first year, uh, I shared uh, an apartment with a friend. Uh, he was missionary too. This is after you got married? After, uh, before. No, I'm talking about after you got married. Yeah, so okay. then we got married and uh, before we got married, so our leaders thought uh, uh, to us that they uh, would like to have a ministry with students in another town in Moldova uh, where Campus Crusade didn't have ministry, 
And so they ask us if uh, we want to move there, considering that we are going to get married. And uh, we said, yes, why not? Uh, and uh, uh, so we got married, we had our wedding, uh, but somebody suggests that, well, maybe it's not good to rent something for a month and then move to another town. And so we said, well, maybe yes, to save some money, but that was a uh, bad advice because we were just married, uh, living on our bags in different apartments. Uh, even a week we lived in our office. <laughs> that was a bad decision. But anyway, so uh, after our uh, honeymoon, uh, we went to uh, another town and, uh, well, that was interesting because at that time in Moldova, and especially in that town, people didn't have any idea of, uh, you know, giving their apart apartments for rent. And so we are asking people t if uh, they would like to uh, give and rent their apartments, and they say, no, I can't do that because it's my apartment. And say, well, it will still be your apartment, and I'll pay money for that. And people, no, no, I, I can't do that. So it's pretty hard to find a, an apartment. And so we prayed. We just prayed that God will lead us uh, to find something. So finally we find an apartment. It was in reparation, dirty. We had no idea how it looks when it will be clean. But we said that, yes, we are going to rent it. And then we went to a summer project. Uh, we had a summer uh, evangelistical project with students. Uh, and after two weeks. weeks, yeah, we came back, the apartment was ready, and it was just a perfect place for us because it was close to students, and it was just a step of faith. Uh, so first year, we didn't have kids. It was kind of easier because both of us like every day we're in campus. Uh, so when the first child was born, tough time for me started. <laughs> uh, because, well, I, I, I didn't know how to be a father. And so like our, in our uh, relationship, something changed. So Luda didn't spend that much time with me as she used to do because we had a child and I, I, I was a little jealous on, <laughs> on our boy. Uh, it was a boy, it is a boy. Uh, so we had to learn how to, I had to learn how to be a father for this son and still be a, a husband for this woman. <laughs> and still be a minister to and those. Still, and still be in, in the ministry, yes. Yeah. Uh, when we applied uh, to be full-time missionaries uh, in Moldova, we went through uh, training how to raise uh, our own support, financial support. So we were looking for financial uh, and prayer partners in Moldova. And we uh, tried to raise our support in Moldova first seven years. Mm -hmm. It was hard because, well, in 1990s, uh, Moldova went through a difficult time. It was like your um, depression. Great depression. Great depression mm -hmm. times. Nobody had job, money, even food. From what I understand, okay, so the Soviet Union just collapsed. Mm -hmm. Right. Moldova got its freedom. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Moldovan lay which we call the dollar here the lay yeah. dropped in value oh yes, maybe 90 much. cents or more lower than what it was correct? correct well actually we didn't have lay at that time okay it was a transition so we went through kind of coupons uh if you somehow forget in your pockets and you wash your <laughs> pants so you <laughs> Lost them. It was like <laughs> napkin. <laughs> so you lived on coup coupons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then so we had our currency, uh, but it it wasn't strong. Uh, so nineties was difficult, but we were students at that time. So mm -hmm. you know, like students, we didn't think much about like 
saving money or using money for something. Uh, yeah. But uh, we had to raise support in Moldova. Uh, was hard because the uh, Christian community, I would say newborn believers uh, community wasn't that big at that time. And it's still not big. It's about 2% in Moldova. And so raising support in Moldova was uh, difficult for us. Okay, so let me let me hold this your thought right there because when you go to Google, they know everything, right? Mm -hmm. And you you ask the question about Moldova, what kind of nation it is religiously? It'll say it's ninety five percent Christian, right? Okay, so you're saying two percent. So what is what is the difference? Why are we having a problem with that? Yes. Uh, well, I emphasized newborn believers uh, because, uh, okay, Moldova consider itself a Orthodox country. Uh, so I believe that there are true Christians among Orthodox people, uh, but the uh, teaching of Orthodox uh, Church is that, well, while you were baptized, you are Christian already, and they baptize your uh, children. Uh, and so then you are in the in process of uh, sanctification. So, but many people, they, they say that they are Orthodox Christians, but they have no idea about the faith. So it's just, just a tradition. So it's like, I was born in a Christian country, I am a Christian. Uh, but most of them don't know their Bible teaching. They, they may believe that God exists. Uh, they may believe that uh, Jesus is Son of God. But they don't uh, believe that uh, to have personal relationship with God. And you would say they don't follow the teachings of the scriptures or follow the teachings of Jesus, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So when I say newborn believer, I mean uh, those who understand the gospel and accepted Jesus as their personal uh, Lord and Savior. Okay. Okay. Go on with your story. <laughs> About raising support? <laughs> <laughs> raising support. Well, it's interesting if you're raising support from Moldovans who don't have money, but they have coupons. And you're, are you raising coupons? At that time, At we that didn't time. have uh, any coupons. We had already lace. Okay. But everybody was struggling financially. Uh, we, uh, well, economics in Moldova just started to work a little bit. And everybody was looking how to survive how to make their life better and uh, well we had some people promise to support to donate uh, monthly uh, to our ministry but they couldn't afford their commitment and um, we found out that many times uh, after a month uh, we received for example a hundred dollars and after a month we could receive just twenty dollars and we never know which amount we will have next month. And we had to trust God that he will care about us. So just for you, my audience, I want, I want to explain a little bit here. So Moldova, probably up until the war with Ukraine and Russia, was uh, noted as the poorest country in all of Europe, Eastern and Western Europe. And uh, back when I actually I met you in 2009, I came to Moldova in 2011 and mm -hmm. stayed there. Back then, that's what, 13 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the average salary for those who live in the city was about $250 back then. And uh, in the village is about $50. Of course, in the village, you're growing food, you're, you're bartering, you're this and that. And, um, but now it's up to a whopping $300 in the city and $75 in the, in the uh, villages. So even now, it's a very poor country and it would still be very hard to gather support from those only from Moldova, correct? Correct. And it is a reason why people uh, went abroad 
looking mm -hmm. for better jobs to have better salaries and they are working hard there and se uh, sending money to their families in Moldova and because of this uh, prices went up and uh, it is pretty hard to survive with uh, well, being honest being um, uh, not stealing from the government, government, paying all the taxes, it is hard to survive, yeah. even now. <laughs> okay. And I understand back then when you were making $100 one month and $20 the next month, I guess you ate a lot of soup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only soup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went through uh, tough times, uh, but it was good um, lesson for us to be hospitable and to be ready to feed everybody who would come to our house because we don't know uh, what they are going through. Okay. Well, actually, I'd say that uh, uh, having low support, uh, so we are thinking what to do. We had two boys already. And uh, uh, okay, for me, as as father and husband, so I was thinking like I have to provide somehow for my family, and I, I had in my heart the calling for ministry, but the ministry, okay, the ministry was good, but the financial part was bad, so I didn't know what to do. So while I remember one night we were talking to Luda and say okay we have to change something because uh, we don't have enough support uh, so maybe we have to go to have a job and uh, so we are thinking about that and say okay where we want to go uh, to village because uh, we have a house there we can go there and at least not to pay for you know for a apartment and I say okay so then we have a house, we have a place to, to, to live, so what we'll do next? Like, okay, so Luda said that I'll go to work in, probably in a school because she she's a teacher. And I say, well, I didn't practice my, what I studied at university, but I can figure out and, and I, I can find some job. I, okay, so what next? So we have jobs, what next? And so we'll go to share the gospel to people in the village and do what is supposed to do. Uh, you know, answering to our calling and say, okay, so we do that. And then we realize that, wait a second, we are doing this and it's not necessary to change something to do the same. And uh, uh, I said I said to you that, that I don't know when and I, I don't know how, but I believe that God will provide for us. So I have a big question because I know that I've talked to many people in the ministry and uh, some even in Moldova, and when they get to the point where their income, their finances are not there, but they have this calling or they have this ministry, what I'm asking you is when you were at that point, and I want to especially ask Luda, I know that you're the worrier, but Luda, I want to ask it, it also, um, were you at the point where things weren't meeting your um not just expectations, but your life, the way to live, to eat, and all this. Were you ever, ever, did you ever consider maybe this wasn't for you to be in the ministry and you needed just to go get a job to survive? Well, we had these uh, thoughts. Uh, what should we do? Uh, what we are doing wrong, maybe, because we don't have enough for our lives. <clears throat> but it was very important to us to understand God's calling. And uh, we had to trust Him that if He called us in this uh, ministry field, He will care about that. But we had to go through this lesson to be thankful for everything, even have a little bit or having more, just to be um, thankful. I remember a moment when I was in the bathroom and usually having small kids, I will, I practice uh, praying um, anytime. And being in the bathroom, I was praying and uh, following uh, points uh, to thank God, to praise Him, and after that for, uh, to pray for my needs. 
And it was at the point when I praised him and told him, oh, I thank you for kids, thank you for friends, for disciples, blah, blah, blah. And I felt like he's picking me and asking me, are you really thankful for your life? And I thought, well, you know my heart. I am not really thankful because you know struggles, what we are going through. Why do you lie to me? <laughs> so if you are not thankful, just tell me what is in your heart, because I know what is going on. And I told him, well, uh, I am, for me, it's hard to go through these times because uh, I don't know um, how can I feed my kids tomorrow. Uh, even to, tonight, I don't know what kind of dinner to prepare with nothing. <laughs> and I am upset on you because you care for many unbelievers, but it seems that you doesn't care for my family, your children. <laughs> and he told me, just be thankful and trust me. And I learned this. I tried to, to see my heart. Um, if I am not thankful, just to change my attitude and to trust him. And I saw many times how did he care about our family and he sent uh, faithful partners and our um, support was uh, raising a little bit a, a year after year. And uh, now we have much more. And we had a lot of witnesses about uh, God's uh, faithfulness and care. And we see what he provides for his children, uh, for missionaries, for other people. And it, it fills my, me with joy. <laughs> I'm happy because I have Heavenly Father who cares about me. Good. Well, actually, we didn't have full support for 22 19. years. Yeah. Yeah, so 22 years, we never had full support. Uh, but as Duda said, uh, we saw that God is providing. Uh, sometimes, you know, somebody will be inviting us for the dinner. So we learned that God is providing for us. <laughs> Uh, I, I remember I, I had a friend, I, we have a friend, so one day he called me and said, well, can I come for dinner? And I said, uh, but they, have they had tough time at that time too. So yes, you, of course you can come because I did the same. When I was hungry, I was asking people, can I come for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and uh, still, uh, God is still providing. Uh, we see this. It's not like we have everything we need. Uh, but I would say that that is just a way to to know God better and to trust Him fully. Okay. So now you have added to your two boys, you have two girls. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the first time that I came and stayed with you, uh, you had your youngest, Yana, she was six months old, I think it was. And, and I didn't get a wink of sleep <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> and uh, and Elmira, she was, was she two? She, she was two years old. And she would come in and wake me up if I was asleep and talk <laughs> to me and, and I had no clue, but it was just kind of cute. <laughs> but I noticed something I noticed that, you know, your, your flat that you had, it was a two bedroom with four kids, boys in two room, one room and the girls in the other room. Then you had the living room, which was your bedroom. Uh, and then you would fold up your bed and turn it into a couch. And it kind of became a, a place that you had Bible studies and you had dinner and you had other things going in your hallway. You, you had dinner in a hallway, but your hallway was the kids play area, mm -hmm. you know, and they were happy with hitting a balloon in the air. I mean, it was just really kind of cute, you know, because I see here in the United States, a lot of kids, they're not happy if they have, unless they have 15 different toys that do 15 different things. And they were just really, it was really amazing. And you spent time, not only in your ministry, but you spent time with the kids doing things. 
Well, actually, it wasn't like that all the time. So when our first son was born, you know, it was something new for us. Uh, and uh, uh, in a town uh, where we had the ministry, it was a small town, everything just, you know, like five minutes walking okay, was pretty close. So yes, I, I was more time at home. But when our second son was born, uh, I was a team leader. Uh, at that time, we moved to Kishinev, capital city, which is a bigger city. Um, it takes more time to go from one place to another place. <clears throat> yeah, at that time, I didn't spend, I would say that I didn't spend enough time uh, home uh, because I was busy with ministry. And uh, in my mind was that, well, the ministry is more important because, you know, we are saving people. Uh, and if you ask me now, do I remember how my second child was growing up? There is a period of time when I I don't remember. So Luda, Luda will tell me that you weren't home. But for me, it was like, I was home. But now I realized, well, the, uh, later I, I realized that, no, I wasn't home. I was maybe physically home, but not with my heart because I was busy with the ministry. And that was kind of a uh, bad time for me because I, I, reali I realized later that I wasn't, I wasn't home with my kids, with Luda, with your needs, with their needs. Uh, so I kind of regretting now. Uh, so we see some moments in our relationship with my second son. Uh, we are still building our relationship, probably not because of just of that time. Uh, but anyway, so I kind of connecting with that time that I had to be more emotionally home, not just my body. When did you get to the point where you felt like you needed to, you weren't spending the time you needed to at home and you needed to do, start doing it and balancing it out? Uh, it's hard to say when. Probably, probably when I, I, I felt that our relationship with my kids are not going well. So that, at that time I had like a red flag for me that, oh, I have to change something. And Luda was telling me this. Uh, <laughs> Wives are good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't understand her because, okay, we had this calling to be missionaries. And I thought that it's supposed like to be more time in the ministry. And I didn't realize that the ministry is everything around me. My family, my kids, uh, my team. Uh, I say my because I had to spend time with them. Uh, and so plus uh, uh, believers, uh, disciples. Uh, yeah, so like all of them are part of my life. And God called me to the ministry, not just to be uh, uh, to to do just small pieces from from it, but you know, like to embrace all of the people that are in my life, including my family. Uh, yeah, so it was a hard lesson for me. I didn't I didn't learn immediately. Uh, we had time when we were arguing, uh, you know will keep telling me that you are not home. I try to convince her that I, I am home. Uh, but with the help of other believers uh, in studying the Bible and my personal relationship with God, so finally I understood that, well, I wasn't home. Uh, just my body was home. <laughs> Susan would say um, that God's voice many times sounds like your wife. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's good at that. <laughs> so let me, let me, I'm going to read a passage for you, and I want you guys to think about it and, and 
tell me what you think about this passage. It's in 1 Timothy chapter 3, and it verses 1 to 7. So I'm going to read a lot of verses here, okay? Uh, it says this, Paul is talking, he says, This is a faithful saying, if a man desires a position of an overseer, which is like a pastor, uh -huh. bishop, okay, he desires a good work. An overseer then must be blameless, a husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, good behavior, hospitable, uh, able to teach, not given to wine or be drunk, um, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, uh, one who rules his house well, having child his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take the care of the church of God? Not a new convert, lest being puffed up with pride, fall into the same condition as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony with outsiders so that he cannot fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. What do you think about that? It's a good passage. <laughs> 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 uh, For a minister, and you guys are ministers, mm -hmm. when you look at this and look at your ministry, or you have other people, you guys are leaders, so you have other people getting into the ministry and coming on. How do you see this when you see people under you, or you work with, or your own lives? Well, um, I would say that for, for a Christian, because we are talking about, uh, we see our lives, lives separated. Uh, we have kind of private life, yeah. Uh, we have, I don't know, our home, our rules in our home. But Jesus is talking about his church, yeah. And thinking about church, I may not say everything that what a church means, but there is relationship. So relationship with people around you, uh, relationship with your children, with your wife, with your uh, brothers and sisters. So it should be kind of this, the same relationship. So we cannot divide. So now thinking about this uh, passage, so if I'm, I don't spend time with my family, but I want to spend time with other people, there is something wrong because they are also part of the church and I have to build relationship with all of them in the way that all of us will grow up in the image of Christ. So if I grow up in the image of Christ being good with other people but not with my family, there is something wrong because anyway, so Family is closer to me because we share not only only words, we share our hearts to each other. We know our problems, we know, I don't know, our secrets, yeah? So it, it uh, drives us closer to each other. And so if I, I cannot do this ministry with my family, so I, I, I'll not be able to do or to build this closeness with with the Church of Christ. Well, there's an. You can say something. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I see she, uh, here in this passage a person who is humble and uh, obedient to Christ. Well, if you want to be a leader, uh, a pastor or a missionary, you should be uh, obedient to Christ, to be led by Holy Spirit. And I see here a person who uh, trusts God and let him use him, um, let uh, Holy Spirit to use this person in every level well, of his life in, or every area of uh, the life. Um, here is a family here, a relationship with our people, uh, with the church, with people who we are ministering to. Well, <laughs> I see the idea what we have to let Jesus to live in us and through us and I see that there are many times when um, I have prayed 
Jesus, just tell me what should I do now? I need your wisdom, your um, um, way, guidance. way, uh, paths to go through because I don't know what is more important for you right now. Now can be more important to spend time with kids and to let other people beside me. There are some times when I have to ask my uh, children to wait, to be patient and to wait for another day or hours uh, because here is another person who needs right now God's love. And I would love to show uh, God's love to him right now. And this is just uh, a wisdom maybe um, from uh, Holy Spirit to understand what is more important for his kingdom right now. Mm -hmm. And a person who is looking for that, he is a good leader, he is a good pastor. Because ministry, it is not a job, this is a life. And this is life um, uh, what should be um, submitted to Holy Spirit. And he is working now for me in special places and special times and with special people what he wants to me to be uh, excellent it's interesting because the way that I, I see the two of you is very separate though when i think of you i think of you very together uh, i think of very separate because I, I see Radu, I see you as very wise, you know, you're, and your wife sees you as very wise, which is, I've heard her say this. So, um, and you're one of the people I call when I have a problem and I need someone with wisdom. So I think you have a gift of wisdom. And on the other end of it, I see you, Luda, as somebody who's very powerful and strong in, in what needs to be done with the Holy Spirit and what needs to be done in, in the guiding and walking a straight line. In fact, I know there's times when Roger will do something and you'll get mad and he'll come over and he'll say, and I'll see what's wrong. He goes, Luda's mad at me. He did something wrong? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so he goes, and I gotta apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I'm wrong and he gets Well, I know, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of, but for a man, it's harder. It, it, it's, it's interesting because in, in my life, I've come to believe that women seem to understand relationships better than men. Yeah, that, that I, I, I was thinking about that, well, Luda is, uh, feel relationship different than I do. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm kind of like facts. I need facts for this relationship, like with my boys, yeah, or with my kids. I need facts, uh, uh, facts, what, what you need. Are you hungry? I can do that. So do you need something to buy? Um, I don't know, for school? I can do that. And I think that that is relationship. Uh, but in fact, it's not. So because now I see with your help that relationship is like, I have to listen to the heart, mm -hmm. but I need time. And with my boys, we need time. Uh, with girls, more time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we need time, and uh, but time doesn't come to me as a fact, you know. Uh, it's sometimes I don't understand time for rela uh, for relationship, but she understands more. So she's helping me, but also I'm helping her to see some facts for rela uh, relationship. So in your ministry. I mean, you've been all over the map. You've come from the beginning where you were just working with students, you've become team leaders, you've been national directors, you've been in charge of your own team, your own ministry area, family ministry. You've done a lot, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot, and what's really amazing is I see you sometimes where you're doing a lot and you say, you know, I need to let go of some things. It's taken away from my home. It's taken away from, or I'm getting a little stressed, and, I, and it's not. I can't be as effective. I've heard you guys say that. Yeah. And that's that's really good, you know. And I, and I see you today. I mean, has Daniel gone on his trip yet? Uh, soon. Okay, so you have two boys, and they're what, 
19 and... 20 years old and 22. 20 and 20, 20 already. He will be in Chulu. Okay, 20 and 22, and they're both on mission trips this year. Mm -hmm. And you're here in the United States with both your daughters, and they're homeschooled now, which takes a lot of time. And uh, you have... Uh, it's incredible how you work this in, in what you do, in your ministry. Um, how do you balance it today? Um, for me, it used to be hard to say no. Uh, if I can do something, I want to do it. And uh, little by little, I, I had too many responsibilities. And I saw that first what was suffering was my uh, relationship with some people, not with everyone, but with some people. And of course, first where, where I see this is in my family because of the, you know, being more close than with other people. So uh, I'd say that when relationship is suffering, it's a indicator of that we have to balance some, something in our, in our, in our life. So sometimes I think, I think that, well, uh, the ministry needs me, uh, I'm thinking. It's not necessary that the ministry needs me because if I feel that there is something wrong in my family or let's say with Luda and my relationship with Luda, so I have to, or to stop something, even I think that that is a ministry and it's good ministry, uh, or I have to pause it because there is something that is going wrong in a relationship with some close people, let's say Luda, but it doesn't reflect uh, Jesus' character in me. So therefore uh, I learn, I'm still learning the lesson to say no. And uh, you know that there was a time when I had too, too much in my hands and I said, I, I had to say, well, that is good, but I have to say no because I don't want my relationship with Luda or my relationship with uh, our uh, uh, crew staff to suffer. Because in that way, I don't reflect Jesus in me. And I want to ref uh, Jesus to be reflected through my life. It is hard to balance, really. <laughs> and sometimes we cannot balance. We just always have to ask for wisdom, what mm -hmm. is more important today to do. Yeah. I know that I have uh, known ministers, pastors, uh, who spend a lot of time at the church or in the ministry working or visitation, and they don't spend a lot of time with their children um, or their wives. And things that end up is their, their children turn away from the Lord or they'll never come to the Lord. And they'll, they'll basically decide they hate God and don't want anything to do with God because their father never spent time with them. Uh, I've seen marriages where there's a infidelity or divorces because there's not the time spent with, with each other. And um, th there's another passage that Paul talks about. I don't know where it is. It's in Timothy. He talks about um, taking care of those in your family. If you don't, you're worse than a pagan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's just financial. I think that's in every method, in mm -hmm. every way in relationship. I mean, you guys really are incredible. Everyone I've ever known who knows you respects you guys. Every person. I've never known Thank anybody that, that has a bad word about you guys at all. And that's almost amazing because most people have, I mean, unless I just haven't met them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it says a lot to you and to your integrity and to your love for each other and the love for the Lord. And and your children are amazing. I mean, I, I love your kids. They're just, of course, you know, they're like my own, you know, family. You guys are like my own family. So it's just pretty incredible. Um, I want to read a couple passages just for you. Okay. Um, one of them is this. 
uh, it's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, but without faith it is impossible to please him or please God. Mm -hmm. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. One thing that I have always noticed about both of you, collectively and individually, is you are always seeking the Lord. You're in faith. You are practicing that faith and seeking Him. And I'd say that uh, seeking the Lord is the key for uh, a balanced life. Mm -hmm. Uh, as Luda said, we don't really know what it means to balance. Uh, so I, I was thinking this morning about what it means to have a balanced life. And I didn't have an answer because I don't know what it means to ba to have a balanced life. There it's is like no any formula. To do 20% here and 20% here, <laughs> what, but what it means 20%. Uh, when it comes to relationship, because ministry is relationship, yeah? Uh, family is relationship, church is relationship, uh, even work is relationship. Uh, yes, we achieve goal, some goals. I am a goal-driven person. Uh, but when I think about Jesus, he's talking more about relationship. And our life should be a relationship with Jesus. Uh, so it means that I have to listen to him. I have to tell about my needs and then to follow what he is teaching me. And of course, we have the word uh, we can read. We have fellowship with other believers. They can teach us if we want to be taught. If we don't want, we will not listen to them. So it's, again, I, I would say that relationship is something that it's showing us it's our life balanced or not. Mm -hmm. And um, even where should we go? As Peter answered to Jesus, where can we go? You have a word of Eternal life, life. Mm -hmm. and uh, he is our life. Uh, and he fills everything with his presence. We cannot do, well, actually we could do without him, but uh, acting by our sinful flesh, we are going to death. <laughs> And acting by His Holy Spirit, Spirit, we are coming to life. And without Him, we cannot do, we don't want to do anything. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let me read this other passage. It's in Philippians 1.6. And it says, Being confident of this very thing, that He who has begun a good work in you, you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> and, and I... I, I read this to you as a blessing to you. Thank you. Because I, I really, I believe in you. I think you know this. I've, <laughs> I've only, you know, uh, always have, have believed in you guys uh, more than anybody I've ever met. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, Thank you. If I can move to Moldova and live next door to you, I would. Okay. <laughs> but I have a wife who won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to balance your life. <laughs> <laughs> so I come as much as possible. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's really truly amazing when when I I know that my wife uh, Susan is this, has been your greatest uh, support. Also, you know, mm -hmm. um, it seems like everybody I know who supports you here somehow Susan's involved. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she just seems to know a lot of people, and she really wants, she gets excited about helping, you know, and it's really good. But I, um, I, I really don't know how to say more than what I've said. But you guys, um, if anybody watching this program understand this, that it takes a lot to be a missionary. It, it really does. It takes you not just the hours of the day. It, it takes the time, the emotions of your heart. It, it takes, just drains you sometimes. Um, I mean, I know there's sometimes when you'll video call me, you know, and I know it's midnight your time, and you know, and, and you call me, and, and I can tell you just need someone to talk to you, and you're exhausted. I could tell, you know. 
Well, ministry is more emotional than, <clears throat> yeah. than physical. So, um, but I, I just really want everybody who's watching this to really understand that it, it really is hard. It really it takes a, a lot. But I really believe that as we trust in Him, there's another verse here I wrote down. Um, I wrote it for a different reason, but I'll read it anyway. And it's it's all it's in First Peter five seven. It says, "Cast your anxiety on Him because He cares for you." That was really a, a verse for you, mm -hmm. Radu. Yes. <laughs> but really, in all of us, as we are ministers, I remember going through times when we didn't know where the money was. As an associate pastor, you don't get paid much. And all of a sudden, I go to the mailbox and there's an envelope in there. You open it up, and there's two hundred dollars. It's like, wow, you know, it's just amazing. And we have no idea who did it, you know, but God watches over us. And I think you're 100% you're right when you said, you know, you had to really tell God, honestly, this is where I'm at. And him saying to you, you need to trust me. And I think the fruit that you have shown all around your lives is obvious. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us. I uh, Actually, for, before I sign off, is there anything you guys want to say? Uh, well, um, I had to prepare this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are preparing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell. I don't know who you are. Are you a missionary, a pastor, any worker in God's fields, or just having normal, usual job? Anyway, make Jesus your God, your Lord, to lead you everywhere, anywhere, and um, anywhere, I wanted to say. Let Him to be your Lord, and let Him to be your life, and water what you would drink every day um, and to be filled with live and you will see his glory you will see his fruits uh, holy spirit will work for you amen <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us today i really appreciate uh, everyone who has watched this video please share this uh, to your friends your contacts and I uh, pray that everyone have a wonderful day today. Uh, pray for this couple, if you will. Uh, you, uh, there's a, a link there, a website. You can go on to this website and read their small, short testimony. Um, and if you're interested in any in them and contacting them, you can either contact uh, them. I believe there might be an email on their page. If not, you can email me or go onto our page where it says uh, missionaries or where we support. We do support them at the Believer's Journey and you could uh, contact us and we will get you uh, to them with an email, okay? So have a wonderful day today and have a wonderful week. Aloha.